This is a Southern Pacific rotary snowplow, and they were originally built in the 1920s, this series was. And about 1958, they started converting them over to diesel electric. Uh, when I came to work for the railroad, Southern Pacific in 1959, as a fireman, there were still some steam operating rotaries. And in the next few years, they had all been converted over to diesel electric. They used them with a, a F7 uh, power unit, a B unit, to supply power to the four traction motors that are inside the locomotive. From the locomotive, they were transferred in here. They drive the main shaft and the gear reduction that moves the big uh, blade here. And it usually runs about, oh, 150 RPM for our, the, the rotary moves very slow, right around about eight miles an hour, 10 miles an hour. And when you're in transit, before you plow, uh, plow snow, you're limited to 25 miles an hour before you get to where you're working. And then from then on, it's dependent on the, the depth of the snow. You may six, eight feet all the way up to 14 feet that you're plowing depends on your speed and what you're doing and the conditions of the track too. Normally the coupler that's here is removed before they leave the shop unless they're taking it to a location that's further away. There's a bar about midway up that comes here that holds the wide wing wings in and it's on transit, that's removed, and on the side, there's keys that go on to the cylinders that lock the bl blade in place. Uh, it can throw about oh, a good load of snow. You can throw it 300 yards to the, either side, depending on how the deflector up there is turned. Uh, they're uh, inside, there's a, I think it's a 60 horsepower steam generator that supplies the heat and the steam for keeping things warm and the crew warm. Usually there's anywhere from about five to seven people that are on the ends where they're operating out of the cab here. It has two sets of controls. The one set operates the pushers that are pushing the plow, and the other set operates the speed of the, the blade, the direction of the deflector on it and all. Uh, half the crew sometimes is in the back locomotive that's one of the pushers because there's a limited space in the cab. And there, we have a lot of times we had plowed up to as many as 27 hours straight out on the road for plowing snow from right around uh, north of uh, uh, Colfax, California, all the way into Truckee, Cal uh, California, over the Sierras. Some of that has snow sheds, some of it has tunnels, but a good portion of it is out in the open. And the snow in the Sierras is referred to as Sierra cement because of the water content. And when it snows up there, it gets quite heavy. So you don't get out and walk around these things here because there might be 10 feet of snow out the uh, door. So uh, we can look around on the side and show you the rest of the, lo of the snow plow. Okay, we're getting back to this thing. When you're in transit, they keep these, the wide wings, wings in. Another safety feature was were these locks. When you got to your location, started plowing snow, you pull these out, hook them over here on the hook, and that there's three of them on each side. That allows the air cylinders up here to open up the wing to the desired width of your cut. Okay, 
One time we were plowing snow and we ran into a wreck and they didn't clear the wreck. One of the wings hit a tie that was in the snow and snapped the arm up there that goes to the cylinder in half like it was a twig. Uh, so they had to take chains, pull, use one, pull one wing in, chain it to the other, pull the other one, and you carry a pin bar that goes clear across and we bolted them together and we plowed snow the rest of the day that way. This plow here came off the, uh, out of the Cascades and I understand that we called Sierra Cement and it was called Cascade, uh, oh, some concrete. concrete, okay. And, uh, and it, the water content just made it extremely heavy. But they had the same conditions on the Cascades that we had on Sierras. And on here you have catwalks. When you're operating, nobody is allowed up front anywhere out of here because it's too dangerous. It has, they used to have mechanical uh, speedometers. This one here has been retrofitted to an electric speedometer. It's the same as they have in the locomotives. It all has uh, Timken wheel bearings in it, no Babbitt bearings. That was changed when, from steam to the Babbitt bearings to the new type bearings in the early 50s, late 50s, early 60s. Uh, the rotary uh, windows up there, the same type of windows that you find on ships. They rotated quite a speed and throws the, the water, the snow and everything off of it. There's steam piping up on the top that keeps everything from freezing. You have a constant uh, flow of steam which is supplied from your steam generator inside. There's entrances on both sides of the, of the plow, plus the back side. It gives you three entrances, plus the one that goes into the power unit that comes out of the back. And that's where the cabling for the power goes back to the B unit that's supplying, that has the diesel engine that's supplying the electrical power for the four traction motors here that turn the blade. Uh, they're a, a BC diesel engine, there, which means it was the original B series engine that had the new C liners and upgrade done on the engine. So that was, they were changed all oh, a couple times in the 60s until they were all retired. But uh, bathroom facilities, they were located in the power unit that was pushing. That's where your toilet was, where you washed. The only thing they had in here for besides the heat, they had a stove that they heated all their coffee they needed. And on the Sierras, you would plow snow all the way until you got to Norton. And in Norton, they had a good sized city under the snow sheds. There was a cafe for the crews and anybody working up there. And we would go in, take a break, go in and have a first class meal. And then from there on, we would plow all the way down to Truckee. And I imagine it was the same thing for the ca Cascade. Southern Pacific, S Southern Pacific Railroad was a family railroad, treated their employees quite well. Uh, they always looked after one another. And when you were to asked to do something by an official, you never refused because you know that person had done that job once before and he wasn't new to enough to it. And that's why working under all the old master mechanics was great. It was a good railroad to work for. I did a lifetime with them. Uh, we can go back to the back and we'll show you where the power cables were routed out the back of the uh, plow. Okay, this is the rear end of the, the plow here. This is some of the cabling. It's 1124 cabling 
that supplies the power from the buoy unit, that's your power unit, through these cables into the main electric cab uh, cabinet that has all the contactors and the controllers in it. Up here are the control cables and light wiring and the uh, right at the very top of the, the above the doorway are two control receptacles that have a there's 32 pins in each one of them and you're controlling wiring from your pusher locomotive and your power unit that's behind here is all controlled through those cables. Inside to the right is where the uh, steam generator is for the supply of the heat in here. Uh, that is about it, what I can think of it. Okay, what we have here is the back side of a 600 horsepower traction motor that are usually located underneath locomotives. It supplies the power to turn the two shafts that are in here. To the left of it, there's an oil tank and Right here is what they call a mechanical lu lubricator. And they were uh, requisitions from some of the old Mali steam locomotives we had. And right here we have a mechanical lubricator. This supplies all the lubrication for all the moving parts inside the rotary. They were originally manufactured and used in the big Mallies that Southern Pacific had. And when they were downsized and scrapping them, they used the lu mechanical lubricators for run the lubrication for all the mechanisms inside the locomotive. And to the left here is a propane tank here to supply the gas for all your, the run, your co coffee maker and everything else that you had. So that just about sums it up for this old boy. We're down there. Hey, go ahead and describe it. Now the steam generator, they were used for heating on passenger locomotives, such as the city of San Francisco. Uh, any operational uh, locomotive that was used in the snow had steam generators in them, and uh, all your plows, like this rotary snow plow, had them in it. On this cabinet here, this is your main electrical cabinet that has all the, the contactors, the resistors, all, and the main trunk raceway for all your power cables coming into it and out comes down through this shielded raceway. Blow it is the ducting for your uh, blowers that cool the traction motors. And to the left of it is your shaft. Uh, there's a auxiliary generator here for making power. The light is shown right here. Uh, there's a what? 1600 gallon water tank above us here on the ceiling. And I think, uh, okay, to the left, that way, if you could shoot that way, I see that they have some equipment up there. That's usually where they kept the pot for making coffee. Uh, the the old-fashioned speedometer, that tells you your RPM of the shaft, main shaft, that you're turning the, the blade up front that throws the snow. Okay, what we have up here is the controls. This here is for the steam whistle. All rotaries had a steam whistle on them. It put out a pretty sh shrill sound. This is a handle for the standard locomotive horn. This would be your sanders for forward reverse sand. 
same as on a locomotive, and you have a crossing bell indicator here. Up front, you have your independent brake handle here for your air brakes. This is your train brake handle for air brakes. This is a switch for cutting them in and out when you're in transit. This is power for your blade. This is forward reverse because you can, when you go from throw on one side, you have it thrown here. The throw at the other side, bring it back to stop, neutral back here. The throw after you've changed the deflector. This here is your controls for your pusher unit. And it will give you a forward or reversed. You've had up to eight, uh, four notches on it uh, for power. You have a shortwave telephone here. The, the handle sits here, type of telephone. This is your blade control for your deflector. The, uh, this is the newly installed electronic speedometer that replaced the old mechanicals. And in front of you on the left side and the right side are all the valves for all your heating elements. So, and to the left of them on both sides is also your secondary controls for throwing the deflector. Uh, and that's about it. And here's a good view of the uh, rotary window. Yeah. That it? Yeah, and on the back wall here is other pictures of uh, the rotary snowplow in operation. And I would say this one would show it that this one here was taken in 19, does it say, okay, it's in Oak Ridge. And that is a steam, when it was under steam at the time before it had been dieselized.